Hello, good afternoon, um, everybody again. Our next um, presentation in this session is given by Dr. James Hoy from Wind River. The talk, the talk is entitled um, Greater AI Visibility in Embedded Software. Dr. Um, Hoy is um, CMEX Senior Solutions Architecture for uh, the Simulation and Agile Practices at Wind River. Thank you very much for the kind introduction. Hello, everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and uh, good evening. Hope you are all doing well, uh, whatever you are in, in the world. It is my pleasure to take part in this virtual Embedded World Conference. My name is James Hoy, uh, Solution Architect from Wind River. I am an engineer, and to be precise, I have been enjoying my embedded software engineering for the last 25 years. I live near London, the United Kingdom. My interest is on simulation for testing as well as model-based design. Today, my short 30 minutes talk is a technical presentation. I would like to talk about the importance of AI visibility in embedded software. I'll make one suggestion out of the many possible way to improve the transparency for embedded AI software. We don't believe this is the only way, nor this is, might not be the best way. There are many other ways and some are still under development and some even not known yet. All I want to do in the next half an hour is to share our journey our lessons learned, and hopefully this short talk plants a tiny seed in the future to help us as an engineer to innovate and build more dependable system. Yesterday from the keynote, I learned from the CEO of Infineon's viewpoint on how to build embedded intelligent system for a post-pandemic world. He mentioned about many challenges developer nowadays need to face. And yes, building intelligent system is hard and building intelligent system that we can trust is even harder. If we couldn't tr trust the system that we build, how can we ask our customer to trust the system that we build? My perspective is we need to gain more visibility to the AI and improve the transparency of the machine learning system by using more deterministic and systematic way to peel off the onions of many layers for the AI black box. Then we can make the inference engine more understandable. For the audience who are not familiar with Wind River, we are a software company specialized in real-time operating system. Our software is used in many mission critical applications such as aerospace, telecommunication, 5G infrastructure, automotive, industrial automation, and space. It powers many satellites, space probe, and also the Mars Rover, such as Curiosity, as well as Perseverance. I've been told my, by my colleague that now we have got a market domination in the red planet Mars, uh, but not just not on Earth yet. We still need to work very hard on it. This year is very special for us. The company is founded 40 years ago in the United States. From day one, Developing code that works is just a small part of our work. A larger part of our effort actually is dedicated to testing and verification, which is key to keep us busy for many years. And very, very roughly speaking, the ratio 
between our test code and our production code is somewhere along the line of 1000 to 1. And traditionally, we have been relying entirely on hardware-based testing. At some point, we even developed our own board, our debugging adapter to assist our engineer and also our customer to gain visibility into the embedded software. And, uh, and also help them to, to see how the software component is working with each other, as well as how they are interacting with the hardware register. It helped us to find the bugs that cause frustration and confusion to the engineer. Very quickly, we, we learned that our DNA actually is software, it's not hardware. Building hardware is hard for us and maintaining all the board and debug adapter distract us from doing our work and distract us from our focus on making our, our, our software uh, excel. I'm very glad that uh, today we share our viewpoint of how we think simulation is the key enabler for us to gain feedback from our software, which often we can decouple it and operate independently on just generic PC. No special hardware is required. We can prototype, we can test, we can experiment without fear. In particular, with embedded software, that has AI modules in it. We can iterate, refine, and gain feedback on, on doing low cost experiment to find out what is the optimum, more, most suitable configuration of the, of, the, uh, of the machine before we making hardware commitment, such as processing power, memory consumption, data bandwidth, et cetera, et cetera. So let's start with our story from our perspective of the need for intelligence system with reasoning, then how to work with black box AI, and finally arriving on gaining insight from the outside. Over the years, we have been keeping up our pace in innovation to provide support in developing smarter edge devices. We started from Rubay's intelligent systems, and now we embrace the machine learning, neural network-based software, such as running a TensorFlow Lite model. With Rubay's system, the relationship between the input and the output are fixed and predefined, hence, Reviewing the rules is already sufficient to gain understanding of how this system works. However, a machine learning neural network based system is much more capable to inference from multi dimension data set. It is often trained on a generic PC with one or more graphic uh, GPU card and, and a lot more data set. To, to, to be trained over hours, if not days or weeks. With however, these knowledge are being captured inside those new network weight, as well as bias in, 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 the, in the processing node, a fully connected system could have hundreds, thousands or millions of these nodes with various weight and, and bias value. No matter it's rule base or neural network base, the system is here to extract information from the provided data in order to propose decision on our behalf. For an embedded system, these proposed decisions, sometime if we are not careful enough, the quality of this decision might be affected by processing processor resources, such as floating point maths, rounding error, its connectivity, and other is active connectivity with other edge devices or server, and maybe their power consumption and also uh, decision latency as well. In the screenshot on the, on, on the right hand side, we can see an example of an embedded system on chip with very capable CPU running an image recognition model from TensorFlow Lite. After processing the image in roughly 50 milliseconds, and it arrived at a decision that it believed with 
78% of confident the picture it sees is a military uniform. 10% is, is a winter tie. And then 1.5% uh, is a bow tie. 1.1% is a bulletproof vex and less than 1% is a suit. Since the beginning of the pandemic, I've been watching too much YouTube video and there are no shortage of tutorials showing you these impressive machine learning algorithm trained with hundreds of thousands of images over many, many days and able to accurately describe what image, what a particular image contains, or maybe a, what, what a song someone is humming, uh, et cetera, et cetera. As an engineer, I'm excited and I'm extremely impressed too. But in the back of my mind is often puzzled because it could take a lot of effort to train a model and the model performed very well on the collected training and testing data. More data does not necessarily put my, my mind at, at ease for answering the question, why should I trust this model? For any practical use of, with real world, if I don't understand the inner reasoning, how can I trust a model if no one can review for its design, if it's fit for inter intended use, in particular for mission critical system? Is the system will work and cause no harm with unseen data in the future? These are all the questions that I've got in my mind. Engineering is a, is a team sport. Embedded AI system involves specialists from many disciplines. At its own core, it is a collaboration between data, science, data scientists and software functions. To successfully develop a useful AI system, we need to balance the risk on developing an implementable model with acceptable accuracy. These worries are based on we understand that we use data science to develop the AI machine models. We understand all the data co collected are finite, which, have con which contains bias. There is sampling at a given uh, space and time is limited on the data resolution. Our error rate in the data as well as in the model, what assumption we made uh, when developing the model, and what implementation restriction we have on the deploy system, such as quantization. Does it met expectation on, on rounding or flooring when we process the data? Are there overflow and underflow behavior known and mitigate in our design? And there's more. Once we have got a good understanding or good answer from the, from the, from the previous question, we which only means that we have got a common platform for a data scientist and embedded engineer to start collaboration. We are arrived at the core of the question. It's about trust. Trust is to be earned by providing a consistent decision, which means that when we provide the same condition, same input to the system, it should arrive at the same decision. It needs to be deterministic. So the time it takes to make the decision is known and uh, predict prediction outcome from a uh, predictable outcome from similar kind of condition. It need to be understandable. The behavior in normal operation is human understandable by doing examination and analysis. And last but not least, this is the toughest one, is the behavior in even unseen condition can be explained based on the take input data and the condition of the model. On the left hand, on, on the right hand side here, we refer to the DARPA's XAI program started about 2016. Describing a, a learned function only presents its decision or recommendation to the user. It is open for interpretation of how this decision is formed. It's prompt questions such as, why this function works, uh, why is not, when is going to be successful, when is it fail, 
Why could we trust and how can we correct the error? The XAI refers to the method that by creating an explainable model and its interface, user can interact and uh, with, the, with, with the interface to gain visibility and eventually trust the model. It answers questions such as why it works, why it doesn't work, and why there's an error. Below, um, I referred to a well-known paper published data back uh, 2016 as well. A well-trained image recognition model have a, a high, over 90% of confidence that it can identify wolf and husky. However, it turns out that the algorithm actually rely on the decision based on the white snow background. It's not recognizing the, the, the animal, but by, te by, by the background is, is going to identify and achieve high confidence rate that it can identify wolf and husky. Our proposal is to create a virtual hardware which gives engineer agility and safety to experiment. AI model with implementation constraint in mind, at the same time, we can avoid premature optimization for hardware deployment. Because with virtual hardware, we have got the ability to change the configuration on demand by modifying the machine setup script. We can increase the amount of memory setting up another CPU if we need to, or create uh, an extra data link uh, whenever we need to. We can, we can use commercial off-the-shelf uh, product as well as open source product to do that. These binary code, binary code that generated from the AI machine model is compatible with, uh, with the hardware as well as the simulator using the same compiler with the same setting of the optimization flag and debug symbol if needed. It can also be uh, the binary coming out from the overnight CI-CD pipeline from Jenkins. These code preserve all the necessary implementation detail, yet using a simulator, we can examine using just generic PC, how these is performed. Any bottleneck is in the code and collect all the metrics that we need uh, using existing instrumentation if needed, as well as doing static and code uh, and dynamic code analysis. The real power comes when, when we start injecting data set from the real sensor or artificial one, which help us to examine the feature to decision sens sensitivity. By manipulating data continuously, running it against the data set, running the model against the data set, we can realize what is the key contributor for the model to arrive at a particular decision. Since the most, most of the simulator are capable to create something called checkpoint, which means that is a recording of the simulation status so that we can replay it at a later time. It is a very handy feature for revision controlled on a particular test and we're able to capture the, the test and share it with our colleague for, for further investigation. A recorded checkpoint also can act as a test baseline for distributed simulation as well, which, is, which means that there are multiple copy of the simulation sets up exactly the same, but on multiple machine and, and different data set can be injected into the model to, to examine the, the, uh, the the output of the, of the AI model. All the above can be scripted in order to create repeatable experiment and regression tests using script such as Python and, and, and batch. Uh, these captures uh, the, the knowledge of the testing and ready to be reused and improved. Now this is the fun part of the talk, we have been investigating many uh, explainable AI method. And one of them catch my attention is the use of Sharpie valued with embedded AI system. It is basically a black box testing method by measuring the marginal contribution with its input feature. 
Lloyd Shapley, who introduced it in 1951 and won a Nobel Prize in economics for it in 2012. It is contributing to the field of cooperative game in game theory and analysis the and analyzing the collision of feature and its possibility of each collision. It assigns Sharpie value, hence to correlate it with the decision it arrived. We can see an example of a handwritten number, how it is correlated to the decision. On the, uh, on the first column is zero, and then one, and then, and then two, up to nine. The red area indicates the high positive contributor, which is hot for its decision. And the negative contributor, which is cold, is in blue color. By measuring Sharpie value, we are now independently, we are now independent from the AI implementation framework, and we can trust and treat the model as a whole. Our analysis is then purely based on the input and the output sensitivity to gain insight into any black box AI model. We also can therefore deploy this AI uh, auditor along with the AI model to, to analyze runtime performance in order to ensure when an AI model sees unfamiliar data set, the system has the ability to detect uh, record or maybe stop or even overtake the decision if needed. So on, on the beginning of the talk, I quoted this year's Embedded World's uh, keynote. And one, one wise word say that uh, every crisis brings opportunity. And I also want to add to it that every opportunity might bring crisis. We need to uh, it's important lessons that we learn from the history that we need to keep looking out and try to mitigate the risk before it accumulate and swallow us. Hence, we need to design the, the smart things to do the right thing. By designing smart AI edge device is hard and earning the trust, we, we also learn, learn that it is hard. We need to consider the implementation and deployment when we're developing the AI model until it's too late. The representative virtual hardware open doors to, to, to quicker testing and metrics collection as well. We can gain continuous learning and improvement uh, with novel methods such as uh, Sharpie value is only one of the many methods that, uh, that you, you, can, uh, you, you can consider. And by deploying the AI auditor, help us to monitor how on the field, the, the AI model performs, help us to identify issue and make correction in the field as well. So um, I thank you, every one of you, uh, your time of uh, attending my talk. Thank you very much. <laughs>